When solving problems involving rates, we know that we can set up a proportion, two fractions that are equal or equivalent to one another, make sure you have the same units on the same line, and then we can cross multiply to find the units that we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking to see how many pounds is four kilograms. Four kilograms is 8.8 .8 pounds. You don't have to set up a proportion. If you know that you can just multiply the kilograms by 2.2, you can do that. If you have multiple conversions that you have to do, sometimes it's going to be easier to eliminate the units by multiplying across. So you can see in this case, we still want to figure out how many pounds our four kilograms is. If I start with four kilograms, I'm going to multiply by that conversion rate. And because I want my units to cancel now, I'm going to put them on the opposite line. So kilograms was on the top, now it's on the bottom. Those will divide out, leaving me with pounds. So you can see we get the same answer. If you're going to use a proportion, they're equal to one another, same unit, same line. If we're going to eliminate the units, we're going to be multiplying by the conversion factor. We're going to have the unit we want to cancel on the opposite line so that it divides out. In our first example, we're given the price of an item per pound, and we're trying to determine how many pounds we can buy for $5. In this case, it would make the most sense to set up a proportion. We're not trying to cancel units. We just want to figure out proportionally how many pounds we can get. With my proportion, you can see that these two fractions are equal to one another. We've got the same unit on the same line. When we cross multiply and divide, we can see that we're going to have this many pounds. The question doesn't tell me what to round to, so I'm going to keep the exact value. For $5, I can buy almost two pounds of sour dinosaurs. In our next example, we have a person who lives by the Canada-US border, most Canadians live by the US border, and he has a truck with a fairly large gas tank. He's either going to buy his gas in Canada, where gas is reported as dollars per liter, or he can go to the States where you're going to notice it's how many US dollars per gallon. The exchange rate also comes into play, so we're told that on this given day, this is what the exchange rate is, and you have to figure out economically, so in terms of money, which is going to be the cheaper option. In order to make a comparison, we want to get both amounts into the same unit, and we want to find a unit rate. Now, these are already both a unit rate, and it doesn't matter which way we convert. I'm going to keep the Canadian rate per liters, and I'm going to try to convert my US dollars per gallons into Canadian dollars per liter. Because I have multiple conversions I have to make, you could do a proportion. So you could first of all use a proportion to get the US dollars into Canadian dollars, and then you could do another proportion to get the gallons into liters. But the faster way is going to just multiply across. Now when I go to set this up, because I'm canceling the units, you can see that one Canadian dollar is equal to 72 cents US on this particular date. I want to cancel the US dollars. US dollars is on top. I'm going to put it on the bottom so that top and bottom will divide out. I then I'm going to take my conversion rate for volume. I know that one US gallon is equal to this many liters. Gallons is on the bottom. I'm going to put gallons on the top so the bottom and the top will divide out. And you can see the only unit left in the numerator now is Canadian dollars. The only unit left in the denominator now is liters. It's going to give me how many Canadian dollars for how many liters. When we multiply fractions, we're going to multiply the numerators and then we're going to multiply the denominators so we can see this is our result. And then again, we're looking for a unit rate. So I'm going to take my price in Canadian dollars for the amount of liters I can buy at that price. And then if I'm looking to figure out the cost per one liter, again, we can set up a proportion, but knowing this is a unit rate, I would just probably divide those. And in the United States, it's going to cost us about a dollar and four cents or five cents Canadian per liter. So if we compare a dollar six to a dollar four and a little bit cents, it's going to be cheaper on this particular day to buy gas in the United States. And in our final example, we're going to plan a gathering with 180 people expected to attend. We have dessert squares, which come in boxes of 24, and we estimate we'll need about 2.5 squares per person. Now, it doesn't mean someone's eating half a square. It means some people might eat two, some people might eat three. This is the average amount of squares people will eat. You have to figure out how many boxes should she buy. And again, there's so many ways that you could do this. So as you go through the process, just be really clear on showing what you're doing and then justify your final answer using those calculations. I'm going to begin by using the rate that they give me 
and setting up a proportion to figure out how many squares I'm going to need in total. Now, you might recognize that we can just multiply those two together, in which case you don't need a proportion, you can just show your multiplying, but if you're not sure, a proportion is always gonna help you out. Knowing that there are 24 squares in one box, I then set up another proportion, and again, you might just recognize 450 divided by 24, you can get the answer that way, and we end up with 18.75 boxes needed. We cannot buy a part of a box. Even if this number here in the 10th position was less than five, you still are going to round up in this case. You don't wanna be short on food. It's always better to have a little bit more. So we would round up regardless of what the digit was in the 10th place. And then you can always have leftovers for lunch the next day.